Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and I hope you are getting well with your preparation for uh, June examination. And uh, in this video, I'll be discussing the assignment of MCO 23, Strategic Management. And uh, uh, let's straight away start with the first question. But before that, I would request all the viewers to uh, kindly subscribe my channel and also share it to your friends for such beautiful and useful videos. Okay, the first question of the assignment of MCO 23 was uh, what is mission and how it is different from purpose and what are the essentials of a mission statement. Okay, to understand mission, uh, like uh, you know, you can write this definition, this is the best one. Uh, the mission of an organization incorporates the activities undertaken by an organization. Uh, basically, you know, it highlights the market targets by the organization, technology adopted and uh, product and services offered to the customers. So like this. So basically it is the, you know, uh, mission means essential purpose of the organization. Why it is being established and uh, what are its main mission and how it is going to achieve those missions and targets. Uh, the basic essential criteria of a mission are you know it should be achievable it should not be void it should not be an impossible target so so that you know the the, the employees can easily achieve the mission of the organization the second one is uh, it is it should be you know easy to understand it should not be a very complex the mission should be simple clear and understandable the third one is clear and specific it should be precise and not a walk and uh, you know it should be uh, focused all the time to achieve the objectives uh, the next one is aspire that means it should be able to inspire the employees uh, then comes individuality that means it should be able to define the character of an organization okay so like this you can write five points uh, for the essentials of mission and uh, this is the tabular form of the difference between purpose and mission now purpose is a statement of doing something whereas mission is a statement of how to accomplish a vision or purpose right so this these sentences can easily point out the difference between the two concepts and uh, purpose is deciding to go ahead with a task whereas uh, the mission is following a task to complete purpose guides us to the task whereas mission drives and encourages one to complete the task uh, purpose generally asks the question why in doing something whereas mission states that what and for whom to accomplish the task or to do the work so like this you might get this in the te exam also so it doesn't matter like you are uh, preparing assignment but you know these questions also come in the uh, you know t examination right so write them properly right and uh, make a good presentation so that you can score good marks in the uh, projects uh, the second part of question number one is briefly summarize what you understand by general environment and its importance for the business uh, when we talk about general environment generally it refers to the external factors that affect the operations of a business enterprise and it includes all these five uh, components or environment. The first one is economic. Uh, second one is political and legal environment. Then socio and cultural environment. Then demographic environment and technological environment. So you can describe all this very easy question in fact. So like this, you know, uh, then we can uh, write down the importance or significance of general environment for a business organization. The first one, you know, it helps in determining the business opportunities and threats. That's very simple. By analyzing the environment, we can identify what are the opportunities we have uh, for growth and expansion. And simultaneously, we can also find out the threats from the market. The second one is giving direction for growth. Uh, you know, it gives all essential uh, components or, you know, uh, it, it infuses us with all sorts of factors 
that can determine that can help in the growth and development of a business organization the third one is continuous learning because we you know a uh, an organization always try to analyze the environment so that gives rise to continuous learning we learn about the market we learn about the different economic systems we learn about the economic policies of the government we learn about the different types of technologies so like that then it helps in image building that means reputation goodwill uh, the last one is it helps to meet the competition the competitors so that is very essential for the growth and development of an organization uh, question number 2 part a the question is explain briefly the five forces framework and use it for analyzing a competitive environment of any industry of your choice so basically when we talk about five forces framework we refer it as porter's five framework because uh, this five forces framework was first of all given by porter and uh, let's see what are these five forces now these are the five forces first rivalry among the competitors the second uh, second one is potential entrants that means you know the new market the new companies that tries to enter into the market the third one is the substitute products that can be you know um, that can be uh, bought for the other product so they are substitute product like uh, you know tea and coffee uh, the fourth one is the bargaining power of the suppliers and fifth one the bargaining power of the buyers so these are the five forces of framework and uh, one by one you can explain all these five forces like rivalry among the competitors so you can write a bit about like you know five four sentences uh, then a threat of new entrants this is very important because unless and until uh, the new competitors uh, enter into the market and you cannot if you know it is very important for an organization to analyze them uh, to to know about their strengths and weaknesses right otherwise you know they will eat away the market share of the company so <clears throat> and the third one is bargaining power of the suppliers uh, you know the suppliers here means uh, those companies or individuals that supply uh, goods raw materials to the organization so you know when we make a purchase we, we generally you know we bargain over the prices so it is very important to have a good bargaining power uh, of the with the suppliers right uh, then we have uh, bargaining power of the customers like you know simultaneously these customers also uh, do uh, bargaining in the market while buying a product so it is very important to analyze them also and the substitutes the threat of the substitutes so like this you can uh, write down this answer the second part of question 2 is what is corporate level strategy and why it is important uh, corporate uh, corporate level strategy generally termed as you know grand strategies and uh, there are basically four types of corporate strategies first is uh, stability strategies that means to make no change in the organization's current activities so that means the organization is going stable Uh, then growth strategies that means to expand the organization activities uh, the third one is retrenchment strategy that means reduce the organization level of activities and uh, fourth one combination strategies it means the combination of all these three strategies so you can you know expand these points like i have done in this uh, material so very simple try to expand in your own words these are very simple topics and uh, let's see like uh, what are the important uh, points you can write for the importance of corporate strategy the first one is uh, it it shows the direction of the business enterprise like how to achieve the target what way or what path and what sources it should use uh, the second one is uh, informed decision making because by making corporate strategies you know it helps the management to take major decisions right because 
uh, strategies are all made after a very careful analysis of the market right so you know it helps in informed decision making and third one increased sustainability like you know the company can sustain in the market for a longer period of time so like this you can write even some more points for the importance okay let's move on to question number three question number three is uh, you know on comments the first comment you have to give is strategy is synonymous with policies how both are related how both are similar uh, strategy and policy are synonymous because you know strategy is a plan of action for achieving the organizational goals whereas policy is the guidelines or instructions for a certain actions right so you know the the former is a plan of action whereas uh, policy is you know cannot be achieved uh, the, the the strategy cannot be achieved by proper policies uh, then strategy is quite flexible it can be changed according to the circumstances while policies are generally you know rigid they are fixed and for a certain period of time so it is very difficult to change the policies of the organization in comparison to strategy okay then strategy are formed uh, at the top and middle level of the management but policies are generally formulated only at the top level management and not by the middle and lower level of management so like this you can explain this comment you can give your views okay the second comment you have to give is 12% of effective management strategy is knowledge and 88% is dealing appropriately with the people so again this is also a part of strategy and uh, basically you know uh, when the management frames a certain strategy so that is only a written document right so that's why it is called 12% the rest 88% percent lies with how you are uh, you know executing the strategy so that is very important because if you will uh, you just go on planning something and uh, you are not going to achieve those plans so that will be you know useless your strategies will be void so like this so all depends on the leadership that's why this chapter this line has been taken from leadership chapter and uh, leadership means you know to guide or influence uh, uh, others actions right so you can write uh, about the leadership and how like how what what is the role that they uh, play in uh, making or executing the strategy the management strategy so like this you can uh, write a lot about this okay uh, comment c is on the evaluation of the strategy of an organization can be done qualitatively as well as quantitatively qualitatively as we know that it refers to the quality and side by side it is also depends on the quantity of the data right so evaluation here the we are making an evaluation of the strategy okay, how the strategy has been executed and what are the results that the company has achieved uh so that can be done by evaluation so evaluation should be done qualitatively as well as quantitatively right uh, basically a quantitative criteria includes the determination of net profit rate of interest earning per share cost of production uh, rate of employees turnover etc whereas qualitative factors are basically you know subjective evaluation like skills competencies job satisfaction Uh, risk taking potential so like this so there are different processes of strategic evaluation uh, which also you can uh, mention in this question the first step is uh, you know uh, to understand the circumstances affecting the organization strategic situation the second step is to produce a range of strategic options the third step is to develop a basis of comparison right and the fourth one is uh, you know to establish the underlying rationale for each strategy and explaining why the strategy has been implemented so like this there are different roles a leader can play and even like uh, 
while evaluating the strategies all these steps are taken right and uh, <clears throat> fifthly the large number of strategic alternatives may be you know narrowed down that means they are curved uh, for the analysis or evaluation purpose uh, so like this you can write down a lot of steps in this okay let's move on to the next comment uh, measuring organizational performance is one of the important parts of strategic evaluation process again like both the questions are similar uh, more or less similar because it is also related to evaluation process okay, how the organization has performed how it is being able to achieve the objectives okay now this basically this uh, performance evaluation now it depends on like you know comparing expected results to the actual result and uh, you know investigating the deviations and again like you will take uh, proper actions uh, to correct the deviations between the expected result and the actual results so that is all about you have to write in this right uh, let's move on to the next question the difference between strategy and policy now this question i have also uh, discussed in my previous video on mco 23 and uh, let's move on to the second part of this the difference between global environment and domestic environment now this is very simple global environment refers to the you know the international environment and uh, how a company is being affected by that because it's a huge environment and domestic environment basically refers to the national environment the environment that uh, that changes uh, within the nation right in which the organization uh, is working or operating so you can make a table to write the differences also okay uh, the next difference is tangible and intangible differentiation now tangible as we know means something or the substances which we can see feel and touch and intangible is just the opposite of that okay so this is about differentiation and not about goods uh you know the differentiation here like when you write the definition of this the differentiation which can be seen felt and touched are called tangible and a customer can easily see the differences between the two products and make a comparison before buying which includes you know design packing color weight and all that and intangible is something you know qualitative right it is invisible invisible differentiation and uh, it creates in customers mind it is just as you know psychological phenomena so it is basically concerned with the quality the reputation the company has the brand the goodwill customer preference so like this so you can mention all these points in this okay the next difference is uh, the difference between operational and strategic control again it is from the evaluation only operational control basically you know it refers to the routine operations or routine control whereas strategic they are formulation and implementation strategy and uh, these are you know operational basically refers to the day to day uh, operation how to control the day to day activities of the organization and this strategic control basically refers to you know the the the, the control of the strategies the short term and long term plans and uh, basically the strategic uh, these are generally performed by the top management whereas this operational are done by the managers the departmental heads and this is action oriented whereas this is futuristic because it is a plan of action it controls the internal environment whereas strategic control controls the external environment so like this you can expand the table question number 5 is to write short notes the first question is on industrial organizational model i have discussed this in my previous video also now <clears throat> uh, this model adopts an external perspective on strategic decision making and the model assumes that the features and condition of the external environment affect the strategic activities of a business enterprise and uh, you can also write about uh, the advantages of this model this model is very important i tell you for the examination point of view also this is very important so write the answers of this question properly 
The second one is balance scorecard. Again, a very important question as far as your exams is concerned. In short, it is termed as BSC. is a management system that enables organization to clarify their vision and strategy and translate them into an action. It provides the feedback around both the internal business processes and external outcomes, right? And this theory was developed by uh, Kaplan and Norton, very famous uh, management gurus. And uh, this BSC laid down a few uh, four per, uh, perspectives uh, which you should mention in your answer. The first one is the learning and growth perspectives. The second one, the business process perspective. The third one, the customer perspective. And fourth one, the financial perspective. So like this, you can expand your answer. Uh, again, this one, value chain framework. This is also a very, very important uh, question for your exams. Uh, basically, this framework is commonly used to guide the analysis of any organization's strength, uh, strength or weaknesses. You know, and uh, it is more or less concerned with SWOT, 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 and uh, the primary activities of this concept is, uh, you know, the the uh, you know the the controlling the logistics activities of the organization. Then operations transform into various, you know, inputs to final outputs. So like that. Uh, the next short note you have to write is on corporate culture. Uh, this question came in, uh, I think, December exam. It refers to the values, beliefs, behavior that determine how a company's employees and management interact, perform and handle the business transactions and activities. So it is basically concerned with corporate, the organizational's culture, its values, its beliefs. Okay. And this is again a very, very important uh, like for an organization because it provides the, uh, it, you know, it, it creates a positive workplace and uh, it creates an engaged, enthusiastic and motivated uh, workforce, uh, very attractive high value you know it attracts high value employees it reduces the employees turnover and it improves the performance quality and productivity of the employees uh, that results in the growth and expansion of the employees and even that makes the company's uh, sustainability for a long term and uh, the company can give a good return on investment to its stakeholders it can also take competitive advantage from its competitors. Uh, the employees are well aware of the goals and objects of the organization. So like this friends. So this was <coughs> your uh, assignment for June exams. And I hope you will get enough points uh, from this uh, video to write this assignment properly because after all it is a matter of 30 marks. So write the assignment properly so that you can get maximum marks and a very best of luck for the exams. Keep watching my videos and supporting me. Thank you very much for watching.